very good afternoon to all the participants all the distinguished guests and our distinguished speakers we take pride in organizing this national webinar on celebrating democracy on the occasion of the the birth anniversary of uh, late sri s jaypal reddy on this uh, you know 16th january 2021 this program is being organized by s jaypal reddy memorial foundation jaypal reddy memorial foundation is based in hyderabad working towards propagation of the the ideals set forth by late sri yes jaypal reddy he was a great statesman and an outstanding parliamentarian sri jaypal reddy has been one of the strongest proponents of democracy he followed and practiced democracy in letter and spirit and he has also written a lot and spoken about strengthening democracy in india the foundation is run by the near and dear ones of uh, late sri jaypal reddy ji and they have been propagating the democratic values in the country with the help of uh, several programs organizing several you know uh, competitions for the youth in order to promote the ideals of democracy recently on 15th september 2021 2020 we have organized an international democracy day and on that occasion we have also announced a national level article writing competition on the theme of democracy for students to think about and to innovate and to strengthen the the democratic values in the country and in the continuation of these efforts today we are organizing this national webinar on democracy this is to celebrate democracy why we need to celebrate democracy there are lots of reasons to celebrate india is the largest democracy in the world and india stood for the democratic values from the beginning you know even historically if we trace the the equations in different countries different you know there were several kingdoms several you know empires and uh, the democratic way of election of the people even within the villages uh, sabhas were created historically these were running and uh, india has been the pioneer in promote in promoting the democracy in the world since independence india has been stood fast in protecting the democratic values our constitution of india starts with the words we the people of uh, you know the the country so the we be the people have the source of this democracy and the democracy in fact you know represents the will of the people democracy has been practiced in several countries there has been ups and downs there has been difficulties in promoting and practicing democracy in 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 the world in many countries there are struggles but this has been identified as one of the the best demo, you know government systems and india has been uh, an example in this regard and we are living in different times and we need to promote democracy in our country too and we are very fortunate to have two great speakers who have always worked for democracy shri mr you know s y kureshi ji former election commissioner of india the chief election commissioner of india who was on the the forefront to uphold the democratic values and practiced and implemented how the free and fair elections can ensure democracy and sri n ravi 
chairman of Kasturi and Sons Limited, the publisher of Hindu, who has been always champion of democratic values, and he has written a lot about uh, the constitution and the democracy. I'm very fortunate to have both of you, sir, here. We welcome on behalf of uh, Jaipal Reddy Foundation for this program. And we are also joined by Sri Dilip Reddy, former state information commissioner for uh, you know, implementing the, the Right to Information Act. And he is a very well-renowned uh, you know uh, a scholar journalist and uh, you know the the forerunner of implementing the information in the state of andhra pradesh and that really strengthens democracy so we're going to listen to these stalwarts and we are joined by the uh, several dignitaries we are also joined by the family members of uh, Sri Jaipal Reddy Garu, wife of uh, Sri Jaipal Reddy Garu, is uh, here with us. We welcome her and the uh, the other dignitaries for the program. This program is organized in this manner. After this introduction, we will hear Sri R. Dilip Reddy former state information commissioner. He will speak for 10 minutes and he'll be speaking about the contributions made by Sri Jaipal Reddy and the book written by uh, him on the title, 10 Ideologies, the great asymmetry between agrarianism and industrialism. And he will throw light on the ideas uh, promoted by Sri Jaipal Reddy. This will be followed by our honorable guest, Sri S.Y. Kureshiji, former Chief Election Commissioner of India. Then this will be followed by Sri N. Ravi, our honorable guest, the chairman at Kasturi and Sons and the publisher of uh, a Hindu, the reputed national daily of the country. Then we will move on to word of thanks by Sri S. Anand Reddy of S. Jaipal Reddy Memorial Foundation. So this is the scheme in which uh, we are going to move ahead. I request uh, all the, the dignitaries to kindly share your uh, you know, views because we are living in uh, difficult times now. The lockdown due to COVID has really tested all our capacities. The countries are struggling. The economy is struggling. The people are in great difficulties. The countries are now thinking that how we will deliver for the betterment of the people. There are lots of chaos going on in different countries. But fortunately in India, because of the deep roots that we have in democratic values, we are able to move ahead with great confidence. I request our honorable speakers to kindly link it with the difficult times that we are facing and also to provide some solutions on how we can strengthen and promote democracy in these modern times. Now with these few words, I request uh, Sri R. Dilip Reddy, former State Information Commissioner, to speak on the contributions of uh, Sri Jaipal Reddy Garu and about the book written by him on 10 ideologies. A small brief introduction I would like to give about uh, Sri R. Dilip Reddy. He has served as a State Information Commissioner of Andhra Pradesh Information Commission for five years. And he has toured the, the state of Andhra Pradesh extensively and also addressed more than 1300 meetings on right information to explain this law to the people of different, uh, you know, uh, you know, strata. As a 
commissioner of right to information he has delivered so many judgments on transparency information service matters quasi judicial issues in administration he was a you know a foremost journalist with e nadu he headed the the chief of a political bureau at hyderabad and delhi bureau he is presently executive editor of a sakshi telugu daily he is also serving as principal of a sakshi school of journalism and he is also founding president of a green greens alliance for conservation of eastern ghats grace is a renowned environmentalist also so we welcome you sir to share your few words over to shri dilip reddy so namaste uh, thank you professor uh, lakshmanan uh, pushpa kumar ji uh, and distinguished guests of uh, today's uh, national webinar uh, s y kureshi ji and uh, uh, n ram ji and all the participants who are taking part in this uh, webinar good evening one and all uh let me congratulate uh, the uh, sj paul reddy memorial trust for organizing these sorts of programs uh, deliberations uh, previously also they conducted a similar uh, uh, national level seminar and presently they came with celebrate celebrating the democracy is definitely Uh, celebrating democracy is appropriate uh, on the occasion of a legendary political personality of this country uh, in the memory of s j paul reddy garu on his 79th birth anniversary because uh, he uh, stood for entire his life uh, for the cause of democracy he is popularly known in this telugu space also Uh, as a person stands with the political values uh, and uh, a politics he uh, desired for the people centric always and uh, he, he was symbolized for the protection of secularism in this country uh, fortunately i had an occasion uh, to do his interview when he moved from uh, alternate political uh, dais to congress party again whom coming then i posed a question to him and he answered that uh you try to understand my coming back to congress uh, by putting my entire career at stake just for the cause of protecting secularism against a, a, a pacifistic forces in this country that that was his stand for the secularism as far as uh, uh, which is the core element of uh, democracy is concerned that's why i try to Uh, connect this uh, concept of uh, celebrating democracy uh, how linked with uh, uh, the great uh, political personality of uh, s j paul reddy uh, that is that is the uh, uh, very uh, striking point here uh, in the contemporary politics uh, especially in this uh, uh, telugu space uh, j paul reddy is popularly known Uh, for his uh, standing uh, with uh, all democratic values uh, and and uh, con- uh, knowledge filling the knowledge into the uh, political and legislative system uh, that is uh, one significant point uh, to note uh, the democracy is uh, really uh, has been uh, explained well by jaypal reddy garu in his uh, book of uh, uh, 10 ideologies uh, which has been published uh, in english long back and uh, Uh, that uh, again translated into telugu and uh, recently a telugu book also came into the public domain uh, by uh, giving a due or respect uh, to the concept of uh, uh, democracy how this democracy is the uh, worldwide accepted uh, finest form of governance uh, so far and uh, uh, he also explained in his uh, book uh, by keeping one, democracy as one of the 10 ideologies Uh, he said that uh, democracy uh, right from the many civilizations uh, almost uh, the known uh, human history of uh, 2500 years uh, how it uh, step by step evolved despite of many aberrations and many shortcomings of democracy uh, is in a strong position today uh, to deliver uh, uh, the equality uh, before the law to the all uh, human race Uh, by the by giving equal opportunities with the uh, 
uh, inclusive growth perspectives. The practices may be uh, failed to deliver services, but the conceptually the democracy uh, is uh, a great uh, thing and uh, has been accepted by uh, many across the globe. Uh, and moreover, this uh, uh, very particular uh, kinage of celebrating democracy should happen every minute. Uh, should happen in, in every moment because uh, the, the inspiration it gives, the oxygen it gives for the governance in this world, uh, in the various countries, uh, for the survival of human race in this conflicting interest. And as you mentioned, uh, Professor uh, uh, Pushpa Kumar Ji, uh, we are uh, really in the uh, odd times which we are passing through uh, a different and a difficult time. In this particular time, uh, the concept of uh, democracy and uh, uh, not by sitting and uh, uh, pinpointing uh, certain loopholes, but uh, celebrating the democracy is uh, definitely a great uh, causation here to mention. Because it, it, it consists of many uh, core uh, issues like uh, civil rights, uh, freedom of the people, and the liberty of the people, uh, equality before law, and equal opportunities for the people and uh, inclusive growth concepts by the uh, con consecutive governments of different nations. With this, this, this basic idea of democracy is not the new thing. Even if we go back uh, 2,500 years back, whether it is Greece or the Rome, or uh, even in Indian context, uh, if we go back to the uh, Buddhist time, uh, Janapas like Vaishali and many, uh, how they stone the basic core principle of democracy by giving uh, the people uh, due respect and recognition and taking their uh, opinion into consideration. While even, even in their mythology, uh, like Ramayana and Mahabharata, if we go back to the uh, almost 5,000 years back, in Ramayana, after uh, killing of Ravana, when Rama came back to Ayodhya, uh, uh, Valmiki says that he was inquiring with uh, uh, his uh, uh, team of ministers that is Bharata following the words and the advices given by your council of ministers in Toto or he is seeking the public opinion uh, to fine tune such uh, suggestions given by the council of ministers. So what more good governance and the great democratic practice we can expect than that of inculcating idea of taking the people opinion uh, while molding the program. That is, that is the great uh, example we can quote uh, by going back to the Indian mythological background. Uh, and, and recently our Prime Minister Modi mentioned what uh, Uthiram Reru, uh, a, a small village in uh, Tamil Nadu, which is 90 kilometers away from Chennai, uh, which has been visited by former Prime Minister uh, Rajiv Gandhi, that village, uh, way back uh, 1100 years, 920, there was inscriptions on the walls of the Mantapa that how village administration was taking place in those days of 1920, you imagine. Uh, in that, how the selection of uh, candidates and voting power and, uh, and the disqualification of the uh, elected representatives, if they become the wrongdoers, uh, and uh, taking the people opinion and the uh, village uh, Tabas decision uh, for the betterment of the village, such all many, many, many uh, aspects which are the uh, fundamentals of democracy has been given in that particular village. Uh, it, it shows how great this concept of uh, uh, democracy has been uh, defined uh, right from the beginning. Uh, Jaipal Tiharu exclusively in his book, uh, while uh, giving uh, some notes in his, uh, rather than the main theme of 10 ideologies, uh, in his uh, preface writing, by the by, uh, in his uh, introduction, uh, what compelled him to come out with that great book of 10 ideologies? The political uh, scenario prevailing in the country today, uh, under the contrast situations prevailing, and the political thought process taking place, and priorities how changed, and how these all uh, factors prompted him to go with that book. Uh, that book has been uh, beautifully uh, uh, emphasized uh, the perspectives uh, all along the time, uh, all across the world. Uh, 
Uh, that is one thing. And I would like to say before the, the distinguished eminent speakers uh, uh, will uh, show some uh, uh, fine path for us in this uh, com conflict situation, I would like to uh, bring to the notice of the August gathering that uh, all these days we respected the democracy uh, with a people-centric as the uh, great definition has been given by none other than Abraham Lincoln by saying that uh, for the people, of the people, by the people. O over a period of time, due to various factors and reasons, uh, that definition has been uh, uprooted, like uh, not OF, uh, it become OFF uh, of the people. Uh, not uh, FOR, but it became FAR for the people and not by be you why the people at the time of election and do what comes to your mind for the rest of five years. In this context, not the people alone, as far as the, the these like new world order and the globalization for the last uh, 30 years after 90s. Uh, in this context, we must take not the people alone, even the resources, which are the uh, very much uh, uh, component of this planet Earth, which is uh, totally different from other planets in this solar system. Uh, we must uh, we must uh, give due respect to all these resources by keeping that in mind. We must look that environmental perspective also, which is one of the uh, concept given by the Jayapal Reddy in his ten ideologies that uh, uh, what this uh, environmentalism also. In that context, particularly, I would like to share the, uh, with this. The earth uh, systemic administration and governance also need of the hour. Otherwise, uh, for example, United Nations, by keeping all the member uh, nations in mind, uh, they gave certain targets for the uh, sustainable development goals. Uh, in order to achieve those goals, not the people alone, we must uh, protect our uh, natural resources for this generation by the, by the next generation. Uh, one, one among the 17 goals of the 16 is peace, judiciary, and strengthening of the institutions. Strengthening of institutions is the main causation for the saving of democracy. So by keeping that in mind, uh, I before concluding, I would like to quote, uh, particularly uh, what Jaipal Redigaru in his uh, book of uh, 10 ideologies, he quoted that despite of all this uh, uh, shortcomings, he says, uh, I quote, despite repeated and continual setbacks in various parts of the world, democracy continues to have an undiminished uh, appeal for people. Its popularity compels all sorts of uh, rulers to promise electoral democracy. It is true that elections when held are often rigged and people are swayed through diversionary ethnic slogans but democracy as a political system is universally acknowledged, unquote. This is the great concept of Jaipal Redigaru while promoting this idea of democracy that is more relevant today to keep in our mind uh, for uh, celebrating democracy. With these few words, uh, I would extend my uh, heartful thanks for the organizers and uh, trust for providing me this opportunity uh, to share some of my views with uh, this August gathering. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Sri R. Uh, Dilip Reddy Garu, for very succinctly explaining the uh, the contributions and the writings and thinkings of uh, Sri late uh, Jaipal Reddy. Uh, you have very rightly also mentioned about uh, you know the Uttara Merur instructions inscriptions in uh, Tamil Nadu. Yeah, this is really, you know, they are exhibiting the fundamentals of democracy, how that tri thrived in the in the country. And that still flourishes uh, here in our, uh, you know, great nation. Thank you very much. I know that, you know, Srimati uh, Lakshmi Jaipal Reddy uh, and wife of uh, late Sri Jaipal Reddy who is uh, here. Uh, she would, uh, she could recollect, you know, how uh, he, when he was alive, you know, how he was able to, you know, touch the hearts of the people. And, uh, you know, he was always there, you know, telling that, you know, if you want to strengthen democracy, you have to strengthen people. So that was his, uh, you know, mantra. And she could, I think, you know, very well recollect this. Thank you very much, ma'am, for your presence here. We are really honored to have you here. Uh, now, 
we are moving to our uh, next uh, distinguished uh, guest, Sri S. Y. Kureshu Ji, our uh, you know former Chief Election Commissioner of India. I will uh, introduce uh, Sri Kureshu Ji with a few words. Uh, Dr. S. Y. Kureshu Ji was uh, an IAS officer of 1971 batch. He has held several high positions. After uh, you know, um, uh, holding several strategic and key positions, he became 17th Chief Election Commissioner of India. A Stephenian, PhD in social work. Dr. Qureshi is a multifaceted scholar, a polyglot who speaks German, Persian, Arabic, besides Hindi and English. And he has held uh, positions like uh, Secretary, the Government of India, Ministry of uh, Youth Affairs, Sports, Director General of National AIDS Control Organization, Addition Secretary and Financial Advisor, Ministry of Steel, Director General Doordarshan. So like that, his contribution is varied. As Chief Election Commissioner, he introduced a number of innovative electoral reforms and he established an expenditure control division and a water education division in the commission. He also founded India International Institute of Democracy and Election Management to professionalize election management and share it with the emerging de democracies of the world. Over 70 countries have received training under this organization. And he is also a recipient of several awards, just to name a few. Nehru Fellow Award from Nehru Children's Museum, Calcutta. Secular India Harmony Award in 1988. Silver Elephant, the highest national award of uh, Indian scouts and guides given by the President of India. We are very happy to have you here, sir, to speak on celebrating democracy. He has been a member of uh, the Board of Advisors of uh, International IDEA. This is Institute of Democracy and Electoral Assistance in Stockholm. And he is uh, holding, the, uh, holding this position since uh, 2012. He is also a member of uh, the Advisory Committee to assist and advise the Global Commission on Elections, Democracy and Security, headed by Kofi Annan at the time. A very versatile scholar. So we are very happy to you know, uh, you know, hear him today. Sir, uh, with your kind permission, we invite you to uh, speak. I first introduce yourself, sir, Mr. Ravi, sir. What um, <clears throat> now, you know, uh, we are going to hear Sri and Ravi, the chairperson of uh, Kasturi and Sons Limited, the reputed, uh, you know, the press in the country, the publisher of uh, the Hindu, and other publications of a Hindu group. He is former editor-in-chief of a Hindu and has been uh, in journalism since 1972. And uh, since, uh, you know, every, uh, Hindu is part of our life. And I remember that, you know, the, the day I started to read, you know, newspaper, I started with the Hindu. And our thinkings, our thoughts, uh, everything is, uh, you know, shaped by our lives is shaped by uh, such a great quality uh, newspaper that they bring out. Mr. Ravi holds a master's degree in economics and a degree in law. I'm very happy to have you here, sir. I'm coming from Law Faculty, Delhi University, and having you here with a law background and economics background, it really gives me immense pleasure. And he was also a fellow at uh, Harvard Law School in 2000. And he was also a uh, Shorenstein's fellow at Kennedy School of Government in Harvard University in 2004. And uh, Mr. Ravi has been on the lead in shaping and improving the quality of uh, the, the national newspaper, the Hindu. And he joined the newspaper Hindu in 1972. He served as a reporter, lead writer, Washington correspondent, deputy editor, associate editor, all kinds of positions. And his contribution is immense to the newspaper. He was the editor from 1991 to 2011, 
and chief editor, editor in chief from 2013 to 15. He covered several international conferences and traveled with prime ministers and presidents to cover international summits. And his special interests are in writing, including on constitutional and political issues, economic policy, international economy, free speech, human rights, and the India-US relationship. He is the recipient of several professional awards, including GK Reddy Memorial Award, Bread Role Model Award, and was awarded an honorary doctorate by Sri Venkateshwara University, Tirupati. We are very fortunate to have you here amidst us, sir. We request you to kindly share your views on celebrating democracy today. Thank you. Good evening, and thank you, Dr. Pushpa Kumar. Yes. I'm indeed honored to be speaking in this memorial event to celebrate the contribution of uh, one of India's outstanding political leaders and parliamentarians, Sri Jaipal Reddy, and that too in the company of Sri Qureshi, who is the custodian of democratic values in India, both in and outside of, out of office, Sri Dilip Reddy, Dr. Pushpa Kumar, Mrs. Jaipal Reddy, family, friends, and admirers of Sri Jaipal Reddy. In fact, talking of Mrs. Jaipal Reddy, I cannot resist reading out this dedication in the book to her by Sri Jaipal Reddy. And I quote, to my wife Lakshmi, who has contributed to my career through her drudgery for over half a century without Try laying claim to my time of fame. Actually, this is typical Jaipal Reddy. You know, a sentiment, unusual sentiment expressed with great love and sensitivity. I had met Sri Jaipal Reddy on a few occasions and true to his reputation, found him to be deeply reflective and sensitive with a ready wit and extreme courtesy. Much of my acquaintance with him, though, had been through reports of his speeches and, an and announcements and from accounts of other political leaders, all of whom had nothing but praise and admiration for him. And of course, from reading the book, 10 Ideologies, it opened my eyes to many new approaches and insights. This is an extraordinary book written with a breadth of understanding and vision and clarity of thought that few in public life could summon. It draws upon his deep lifelong learning and experience as a parliamentarian and holder of public office, never swerving from the principles that he held dear. Among the qualities that stand out in, this, in his long public life, our absolute integrity that came out most dramatically in his handling of the petroleum ministry, which he gave up rather than compromise with his values, his uncompromising love for liberty and democratic values, and opposition to arbitrary power, his passion for philosophical and political ideas and concepts, his advocacy of modern education. And of course, as Dr. As Mr. Dilip Reddy said earlier, his tolerance and secular outlook. It is fitting that celebrating democracy should have been chosen as a theme for this memorial event. In this book, Sri Jaipal Reddy notes that while several independent nations lapsed into autocracy and dictatorship, Indian democracy remains strong. He finds explanations for Indian democracy surviving in terms of the enlightened aspect of British colonialism or the syncretic, all-encompassing nature of Hindu religion inadequate. Interestingly, he picks on Gandhian non-violence, toleration and compassion 
as the most convincing reason for India remaining a democracy. Nonviolence and democracy are closely tied, and we have noted that violence could be very disruptive of the democratic process, as seen very recently in the aftermath of the US elections, when the capital was torn by a riotous mob. Democracy brings within its fold many aspects, all of which seem equally important. The choice of public office holders, the rights and liberties that people enjoy, the instruments of the state that protect the people and the rights and the attitude of the people and public office holders on the democratic spirit. From ancient times, democracy has been seen as a rule by the people as a whole or by representatives chosen by the people. As Abraham Lincoln famously put it, it is a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Though Mr. Dilip Reddy had modified the terms to suit the current context. Free and fair elections by which people choose their representatives is thus an essential element of democracy. In India, we have been fortunate in having a well-designed and refined electoral system, thanks to the efforts and foresight of men like Sri Qureshi and successive chief election commissioners. As a result, not only have successive elections been conducted smoothly, India is even able to offer assistance to other nations or the mode and logistics of conducting election, elections. All is not perfect though, and the influence of money power still remains a corrupting influence. While the blatant use and show of money power has been curbed, the surreptitious use of money, including outright bribing of voters, remains rampant in some parts of the country. The search for remedies continues but suggestions such as state funding of elections have remained non-starters, largely because of the lack of public funds and the want of an acceptable formula for distributing such funding among the parties, which are too numerous, both nationally and in the states. The electoral democracy, while important, is not all. The content of a democratic society in terms of dignity, liberty, equality, and justice would be equally important. By and large, there is a large measure of democratic freedoms available, though there are some deeply problematic areas. The enumeration of freedoms in the chapter on fundamental rights in the Constitution is well known. The Supreme Court has, through its judgment, expanded the scope of the fundamental rights to take in new rights. Thus, the right to life of dignity beyond bare existence, the right to education, and the right to privacy have been added to the list through judicial pronouncements, reading all these into the constitutional right of right to life as spelled out in the Constitution. Among the democratic freedoms, the rights that have come under strain in the recent period have been the right to personal liberty and the freedom of expression. The use of the sedition law in the Indian Penal Code has seen a curtailment of both freedom of speech and of personal liberty. Not just the states, but even the center has reached out to the sedition law to curb dissenting voices despite the Supreme Court ruling that unless there's open advocacy of violence, critical speech would not amount to sedition. The criminal defamation law, as well as the power of courts to punish for contempt, have also acted to shrink the space for free speech. The most recent case of Prashant Bhushan illustrates the reach of this restriction. Even cartoonists and comedians have been arraigned for contempt of court by some people and taken up by an oversensitive judiciary. 
The courts have been the guardians of people's rights from the executive, encroachment of people's rights from the executive and legislative overreach. Here, the record of the judicial institution has been patchy. For instance, the Supreme Court has been inordinately tardy in taking up cases relating to the detention in Kashmir or lockdown in the state. While the court has pronounced that the right to personal liberty is most valuable, bail applications have been routinely delayed. While the executive and the legislature can be expected to push the boundaries of their authority, the judiciary as an institution seems to have slipped somewhat from its protective role. Coming finally to that difficult to define democratic spirit, it is clear that laws and institutions are only as good as the people who work them. And for the proper working of the democratic system, a spirit of mutual respect, toleration, and playing by the rules of the game, both written and unwritten, would be necessary. Instances such as the Citizenship Amendment Act and the sudden proliferation of anti-love jihad laws has strained the secular and tolerant democratic spirit. Here, I could do no better than quote Sri Jaipal Reddy, and I quote, a majoritarian hubris or minoritarian nemesis can spell danger even now to Indian democracy as either could jeopardize the consensus of Gandhian nationalism. I would not want to exaggerate. Despite these aberrations, though, democracy remains strong, personal liberties are largely intact, and institutions are by and large responsive, though there's a great deal more, a great deal of room for improvement on all these fronts. And in the making of Indian democracy, we also celebrate the substantial contribution of Sri Jaipal Reddy by his exemplary and selfless service in public offices. I am indeed honored to be part of this celebration of democracy in memory of Sri Jaipal Reddy. I'm sorry, yeah. Thank you very much, sir, for this very enlightening words. Such a pleasure listening to you. You have very rightly connected the constitutional vision that we have in the country under Article 21 to deliver right to life and human dignity. Both could not be possible if we do not have strong democracy. You have very rightly linked. And you also stated that uh, we get the kind of a government depending on the people. The people get what they deserve. So if we have to strengthen democracy, we have to strengthen people. It's the right message you have given. We will definitely work for it. And we will spread this message among the youth and the people. Thank you so much, sir, for your kind time and valuable points that you have shared with us. Now, we are very happy to say that a Sri yes, why Kureshiji is uh, you know joined with us now. I have introduced uh, Sri Kureshiji. Now I request uh, him to you know share his uh, valuable inputs with the Thank audience. You. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Pushpa Kumar. Um, although it would have been uh, better. Uh, if I had spoken before, Mr. Ravi, he is so scholarly. I feel very humbled and small after speaking after him. Uh, but let me share my personal experiences. First of all, my congratulations to uh, Japan Reddy Trust for keeping his memory alive. Before, besides celebrating democracy, we are also celebrating his uh, glorious uh, life. He was a great parliamentarian. He was a great human being. Although I never worked under him, he could have been my minister in some ministry or the other. But somehow, I don't know how and where we met and uh, he became very affectionate to me and I became very fond of him. 
and uh, mm. that relationship continued uh, till he lived and uh, i'm glad that his family has kept me as a member of your family even after his departure now we are celebrating uh, the democracy uh, and this is the right time because a week later uh, is 25th of january which is uh, uh, designated now as national voters day many very few people knew that the election commission of india was born a day before india was born as a republic and um, so we thought uh, in 2010 uh, that we will celebrate the uh, the uh, foundation day of election commission on uh, every 25th of january we had organized uh, we were celebrating the diamond jubilee of uh, india's election commission in 2010 and where about 35 countries of the world the chief election commissioners of 35 countries had come and we shared our experiences and the kind of respect they have for india and india's electoral system made us really proud and they demanded that india the, should keep this leadership and every year we should organize uh, this meeting so we organized uh, the validity function again in 2011 where again about 30 35 people came some some of them were the cover common some were different and they suggested that we should make it an annual feature i mentioned it to dr manmohan singh the prime minister but he they dismissed it in just one sentence he said you know familiar familiarity breeds contempt i mean having too many of these will probably not be a good idea so we dropped the idea of that global uh, annual conference and yet we uh, organized an international conference on uh, this occasion where 10 15 countries particularly of sark region our uh, neighborhood and other uh, they, they come which um, keeps our contact alive with them now 25th of january the uh, to, uh, 26th of january the on our constitution was uh, promulgated uh, came into force Uh, we introduced the universal adult franchise from day one. Now, so we might take it for granted, but the fact uh, that USA took 144 years to give uh, equal voting rights to women, and here was a poor country with 84 percent illiteracy, uh, driven by the social divisions, um, uh, suffering the pangs of partition. having 550 565 five, princely state and when we adopted democracy the western world was aghast they thought we have gone mad how will they run democracy these guys with so much of illiteracy so much of poverty but we proved the prophet the prophets of doom wrong because the, our very first election was a great success that was the biggest election in world history and was a great election and in that context uh, uh, it is worthwhile to remember mr sukumar sir he was an ics officer at that point we had not conducted any election we had no machinery no experience yet he put uh, together this entire team and conducted a fantastic election now these days we are very upset when we hold uh, election in 6 7 and 9 uh, phases do you know how many in how many phases he conducted his election the first election 68 phases but that was fine because he used the same machinery which he developed small level he uh, took them from one one place to the other and uh, finally what he produced was historic and uh, my estimate is that even today 80 to 85% of the election that we conduct today is uh, his legacy what he did of course there have been improvement uh, later on um, uh, which is very natural now on the india is the, i have heard many times that india is one of the largest democracies then i also used to say the same thing till it occurred to me the, to see exactly how large are we then we found that we are larger than every continent more we are the have a bigger election than all 50 50 countries of europe put together all 54 countries of africa put together or 43 countries of north and south america put together in you know, other the entire commonwealth 52 countries put together we are larger in fact each one of them is about 50 to 60% of us we are 90 countries rolled into one and now we not only the in terms of number the uh, of voters but complexities of 90 countries uh, rolled into one 
every problem in the 90 countries or anywhere in the world we have it a plenty tribal communal social tension uh, uh, geographical um, uh, problem everything you, you name it and india has it a plenty and despite that we have, uh, we have been conducting very very credible election transition of power um, uh, from one party to other other has always been very smooth we have seen a losing prime minister or a losing chief minister offering his uh, chair to the winner with folded hands with no bickering the in my lectures um, uh, i show one picture of uh, himachal pradesh where a losing chief minister and the winning chief ministers are sitting together and laughing and you know the uh, uh, with such bond homie of the best friend because the loser trusted the election that he has not been cheated unlike donald trump you know who is create, uh, making a spectacle of himself and uh, creating very bad precedent for democracy here in india our the poor country the uh, backward country uh, is a model for uh, people to learn from now in uh, this great uh, work the, that the election commission does the role of the constitution framers has been phenomenal they visualize an institution which will be fiercely independent and uh, uh, totally neutral and just through a six articles of the constitution they created the most powerful election commission in the world yet uh, having said all that you know we also uh, call our democracy a festival of democracy but some people they started criticizing us you know when uh, mr t in session onward so uh, we started enforcing the model code of conduct with a heavy hand and when uh, you know restrictions were put on the uh, election rallies where 1000 cars used to go if they were restricted to 10 where uh, flags on uh, your houses and your uh, offices they were banned because sometimes the opposition will come and forcibly put a flag on you and there will be uh, uh, fights so uh, we thought it is best uh, to do away with this altogether so we were accused of killing the festival of democracy now kill your festival of democracy is not the noise and chaos that it makes the festival is when people turn out and vote and that is when we we set up uh, the election um, uh, elect uh, voter education division in fact when i took over as cc i gave myself two next challenges one was the money power the other was the electoral apathy particularly of the so called educated people who never voted now if you have not voted you have no moral right to sit in your drawing rooms and criticize the government oh sab neta chor hain sab beiman hain and you know now you guys have not bothered to go out and vote on a day which is declared a holiday and then you criticize the government you have no moral right so yeah, in any case through voter education we were able to persuade people to come out and vote uh, there used to be a demand that there should be compulsory uh, voting now compulsion and democracy don't go together your right to vote includes your right not to vote in fact the uh, very famous judgment uh, the uh, uh, nota judgment has in very interestingly i was uh, very happy to hear that uh, mr ravi the uh, is a wizard of law he did it from harvard you know one very interesting point which came out of that judgment was in successive judgment supreme court has held that the right to vote is not your constitutional right it is a statutory right but the your right not to vote have was elevated through that judgment to your fundamental right that is a part of your right to of expression free speech and if you don't want to vote your right so in such a situation to make it compulsory a compulsion uh, uh, and democracy as i said don't go together we were told that australia indo uh, singapore they have compulsory uh, voting why don't we try well you know australia is small we had four australias uh, between two elections and singapore is uh, the the size of karolbag you want us to learn something from singapore which is not even a democracy actually which is an authoritarian regime now through the at the time you know i spoke to my counterpart in australia once that everybody talks of australia how is your experiment of compulsory voting working he says very badly i said why he says we have a 20 dollar fine for not voting and to collect that 20 dollars 
we end up spending 2000 and two three years of correspondence uh, and litigation and i said after all that how much then it must be 100 percent turnout after all it is compulsory he says no it is 90 percent and believe me at the time when i was talking to him we had had uh, we had election in Tirupura a week before that, and Tirupura gave us 93% voter turnout by persuasion, by love, by voter education. Now our voter education has been a uh, game changer, and from 2010 Bihar election onward, every election has given us the higher turnout in history, and uh, which is what I would call festival of democracy. In fact, there was one journalist lady who wrote a, a piece in the Hindustan Times questioning our, and saying the same thing that the festival of democracy has been replaced by the silence of the graveyard. I uh, wrote a counter article in the same paper three days later. I said, well, Madam, then you please show, give me your address and I will send the festival to your house. Then don't complain. And what will the festival do? They will come and paint your house uh, with your, their uh, slogans. They will paste their posters and there will be 24 by 7 loudspeakers blaring outside your house. If that is the festival uh, you are missing, I'll send it to you. So to tell me. Now, the, the people have demonstrated that festival is participation. And uh, the, every successive election has given us the highest turnout in history. We introduced National Voters Day, simple. And it was born in a civil society meeting in Bhubaneswar. When somebody from the audience raised his hand and he said, 18 year is an age which we, we should celebrate. I said, that's a very good statement. Let us think of a celebration. And within a week, we developed this National Voters Day, which is, by the way, coming next week, 25th of January, uh, where we said we will identify the people who will become eligible on the 1st of January from October onwards, beforehand. So that the, as, as soon as the calendar changes, by the 5th of January, we will have our electoral rolls ready to be notified. And on 25th January, we organized 800,000, 8 lakh functions at the booth level to give these new voters their vote. Now, a celebration of this kind is unthinkable. When we launched it in the presence of 35 chief election commissioners of the world, they were taken aback. In fact, uh, uh, I, uh, uh, allow me a, a, a one extra minute. I wrote to the cabinet secretary a routine letter of courtesy in uh, October of that year, 2010, that we are going to celebrate uh, National Voters Day and we will have 800,000 functions. Uh, please ask all the states and the ministries to extend cooperation. And I forgot all about this letter. Now, October, November, December, gone. On the 19th of January, uh, just uh, six days before uh, the day, I get a call from Mr. Uh, cabinet Secretary, Mr. Chandrasekhar was the Cabinet Secretary. He said, Qureshi, your letter, your proposal for uh, National Voters Day is coming before the Cabinet today. When he used the word proposal, my heart sank. I said, damn it, I've almost implemented it. I'm all ready for implementation. You're still calling it proposal. And what if it is rejected? He says, you have to answer two questions. I said, what? He says, number one, do you want a national holiday? Are you, and secondly, how much money do you need? I said, I don't want a holiday and I don't need a single rupee. He says, what? Are you mad? You're saying that you will organize eight lakh function and you don't want a single rupee? He says, no, I'm not mad and I'm, uh, I know what I'm talking about. I will organize all that. I already have money to register voters, which I do around the year. I'm just converting a normal routine annual uh, around the year activity into an event, and event creates a lot of impact. I'll use the same money. This must be the only proposal in India's history which was uh, passed in the cabinet without a cabinet memorandum, because it was because of its simplicity, no finance, no legal implication, and it's, it has worked so well. The other countries who were present, they were taken aback. The you know, such an impactful event and no money. I'm very happy to say seven countries of the world, including Pakistan, Nepal, South Korea, and other, have already introduced the National Voters Day because the idea was so simple. Now, having said all the nice things, there are certain things which are still troubling us. And uh, Mr. Ravi referred to at least one of them, uh, the money power. I will add also the crime. Now, the crime had two dimensions. One, the crime, uh, the murders and the violence which used to take place on the day of the election. 
that of course is history after mr uh, t n session came down heavily um, uh, we have done away with that crime uh, although criminals uh, contesting election and getting elected that is beyond us because the disqualification has to be done by parliament which is a standing issue separate issue now money power initially when i set up expenditure monitoring division and our tamil nadu election 2011 we had the first exp experience it was very very good we uh, seized uh, hundreds of crores all over but uh, and uh, a book which i had written uh, an undocumented wonder uh, the making of the great indian election in this uh, there is a chapter on money power in which i have given 40 modus operandi of abuse of money power and cheating 40 ab now the, uh, which we had discovered till then now they would have discovered many more so uh, money power is something which uh, is, is perhaps the only unsolved problem now uh, again uh, mr ravi uh, referred to a couple of problems which we still have when i was doing my book i came across uh, economist intelligence reviews uh, index of democracy uh, which qualify the, the democracies of the world into full fledged democracies flawed democracies hybrid democracy is an authoritarian regime we were classified as a flawed democracy as an indian i felt very hurt and very sad oh we are a flawed democracy on one hand the whole world looks up to our democracy uh, but then uh, when i studied it uh, there was no fault with uh, that classification because the uh, the whole world appreciate our election a great election does not necessarily mean a great, great democracy we uh, conduct free and fair elections and uh, uh, mps are elected if 30% of them have criminal cases pending against them it is beyond us it is uh, nothing to do with our election management so that is a part of our flawed democracy if the representation of women is less than 10% that is what is keeping us flawed so the, the the corruption in the governance that is what is keeping our democracy flawed which is beyond election but the for this point comes out very loud and clear that great election for, for sure we get 9.7 out of 10 uh, rating but in other things we are down and we have been unfortunately slipping now what reform we need to of course we uh, we have to keep on learning we have to keep on improving and i finish on that uh, although about 50 ref electoral reform proposals are pending with the government but i would say if we do only four we will be doing a great service to the nation first of all the root and the uh, the fulcrum of the entire democratic election commission itself the fact that questions are being raised about the neutrality and non partisanship of um, uh, election commission is a matter of great concern so our appointment system and our removal system should be made full proof so that is the one reform which has been pending for a long time it is it's a pity that the strongest the, the most powerful election commission in the world has the most defective system of um, appointment of election commissioner we are disappointed by the government of the day i was also a beneficiary of the system the prime minister of the day appointed me but even a cc believe me i even a cc i used to say that i would have felt a stronger if leader of opposition had also signed my um, uh, appointment letter because we have to uh, be above all kinds of parties and politics so that system that can easily be introduced but which government want to give up its power uh, the the same party which used to demand that there should be the um, uh, electoral college for uh, appointment of election commissioner they forgotten about it now um, uh, in the national interest Uh, we are not unfamiliar with the collegium system even the cic and the cvc which are not even constitutional bodies mind you they are appointed by um, uh, collegium director of cbi is not even an institution he is just head of a government department like a department of agriculture so um, or animal husbandry so director cbi has a collegium why and election commission of india doesn't have a collegium so uh, that is one flaw which needs to be addressed immediately similarly removal i for my recommendation is uh, mr ravi particularly for your kind consideration that uh, at the moment the protection is granted only to the cec 
but there are uh, this is a historical fact because at the time when uh, in 1950 when the institution was created the uh, election commission was only one man the cec and he could not be removed now election commission is three people from 1993 so the removal protection has to be to the entire institution of three rather than death to the cec you know what happens is i'm telling you from my experience uh, that the other two commissioners who have, do, do not enjoy the protection, they feel they are probationers. They are on probation. They are always looking over the shoulder. Oh, is the government happy with me? Will they elevate me? Will I be elevated? And I used to tell my junior, don't worry. No government has the guts to bypass you. But there is no law. Government could have could bypass uh, the seniority anytime. Now, uh, hope is never a strategy. We have to have institutional check. Therefore, institutional check is that the election commissioner should be appointed by collegium and elevation to CEC should be by seniority, as happens in the case of judges. So what, what is uh, rocket science in it? It's simple. Second, second is uh, debark uh, people against whom serious criminal cases, heinous offenses of rape, decoity, murder, and kidnapping are pending. That is what we have been demanding all these years. But they say that now again, uh, Mr. Ravi is uh, legal expertise. The uh, Indian law is that uh, there is presumption of innocence. You are uh, innocent till proved guilty, no doubt about it. But I have a counter question which nobody has ever been able to answer, although in my audience there have been judges and senior jurists. And my question is that in, in today's uh, jails, today we have 4 lakh prisoners. Of which 2 lakh 70,000, 70 percent are under trial, which means they are innocent because not yet convicted. Yet, four of their fundamental rights have been taken away right to liberty, freedom of movement, freedom of occupation, right to dignity. Now, and right to vote, now which is not a fundamental right, but right to dignity. Now, four fundamental rights of innocent people have been taken away within the ambit of law. Now, right to contest is not even a fundamental right. What if it is suspended? So, therefore, what presumption of innocence are they talking about uh, when uh, we, uh, we have no answer uh, to this situation? So, barring criminals from contesting is important. Do you know the number has gone up um, uh, in the last uh, four elections? 2004 election, we had 128 MPs with uh, who on their own, own affidavit. Their affidavit, I'm not alleging. They give a sown affidavit that they have criminal cases against them. It went up to 162 in the next election, then 182, and now in the last election, 233. More than 40% of criminal cases. And what, what do you expect? Uh, internationally, when I'm asked this question, you know, I feel embarrassed and I don't have the answer. Third issue is money power, where state funding of election was mentioned. It has been mentioned many, many times, but I have written several articles on this saying that state funding of elections perhaps will not be the answer. It will be impossible to manage, but state funding of political parties based on actual election should be attempted. And uh, the, because the, um, your voting figures cannot be manipulated. If you've got 100 votes, you've got 100 votes. I have calculated that if uh, 100 rupees are given to every candidate uh, or the party, for, then it will, uh, large general election, 60 crore votes were cast. At 100 rupees, 6,000 crores. So I'm happy that 6,000 crores are given to candidates and political parties based on the performance, which cannot be manipulated. Now, whether 600,000 uh, crores will be enough, yes, it will be enough. How do I say that? Because all the parties together, their five-year collection of fund through legal and illegal means and arm twisting is only five and five thousand crores. If five thousand crores is all that they are collecting, and we are giving them six thousand crores by dignity by check, and then banning all private donation, no corporate donation, and uh, the, since the state is funding, then the CAG is the audit. They don't want CAG audit. They want their own party cadres to be auditing their account and whitewashing. And finally, internal democracy. We should insist on that because uh, um, um, that is one reason why state funding uh, has been deferred because Indrajit Gupta committee in 99 had said that state funding should be attempted provided 
there is a uh, internal democracy that that provided has never happened therefore uh, state funding has not been attempted but internal democracy we should come down heavily on that uh, the party which not, does not conduct election they should have a, a heavy fines which should be uh, increased by, by the week i think if at least these, these four reforms are attempted we will have every reason to be proud of now particularly after the us election fiasco india democracy is under a limelight we have, the whole world is looking at our democracy and we should improve it further so that for the larger democracy become the greater democracy on earth thank you very much thank you very much sir such a wonderful uh, feast to hear from you election is the the foundation of democracy and uh, you know uh, you have rightly stated that that is not the end you know this that, that's a starting of the process and we need to set uh, several things right to work the democracy in the country you have very candidly explained with the help of your experience uh, and the great initiatives that you have taken uh, in the process of you know strengthening the election process and that will ultimately help uh, the democratic system in the country and you have also very rightly with the four examples of uh, reforms uh, you know you have explained how you know we need to rule relook at the the electoral you know system here in the country thank you very much sir very grateful to you for uh, sharing this uh, uh, you know very important views and uh, i really honestly believe that you know if we are uh, uh, able to uh, implement these uh, uh, solutions that you have given uh, we will really see the festival of democracy as you have pointed out you know already you know you have uh, made it possible and still we can have uh, you know many more successes in the democracy and it's uh, i i very uh, happy to say that uh, the people have great expectations and a great faith in uh, the election commission and it is uh, only because of people like you thank you thanks a lot for uh, uh, such a wonderful uh, uh, talk and all three of you have uh, uh, given very important inputs for uh, the democracy and its values uh, in addition to the the small group that we have in the in the webinar here and this program is being live streamed uh through facebook several hundreds of people are watching it uh, i hope that all of them will benefit uh, out of the views shared here thank you very much uh, to all the three distinguished uh, uh, speakers uh, uh, who shared their views here today now i move on to uh, shri s anand reddy to propose vote of thanks thank you sir Mr. Anand Reddy, the floor is yours. <laughs> Sorry, I, I did not realize that I was muted. Okay, please. Mr. Kureshi ji, Ravi ji, Dilip Reddy garu, Pushpa Kumar ji, and distinguished guests. It's an honor for me to share the platform with such eminent persons on behalf of S.J. Pal Reddy Memorial Foundation. S.J. Pal Reddy Memorial Foundation has been set up with the express purpose of promoting values and ideal related as during his life on behalf of the foundation i thank sri kurish ji sri ravi ji dilip reddy garu and pushpa kumar ji for taking time off their busy schedule to speak about celebrating democracy on the occasion of my father's 79th birthday and the distinguished audience for showing such keen interest in the topic dilip reddy garu has uh, enlightened us about something which i have learned uh, it's a new thing i learned today is that even in ancient times democratic processes were used in the form of gathering public opinion to deliver good governance it's a point that i will remember dilip reddy garu Ravi sir has uh, reiterated the importance of electoral integrity, respect for individual rights, free speech, and the need for spirit of tolerance and mutual respect for democracy to thrive. There is no disputing, no doubting that, sir. And thank you for reiterating very fundamental aspects that need to that are fundamental conditions that need to be in place for democracy to thrive. 
and uh, kureshi ji thank you for sharing your long experience and uh, the effort you got spent and the time you spent uh, learning about the electoral electoral process the limitations of our process and uh, i'm happy that you have stamped to put down the uh, the festival of democracy and made it uh, prevented the unruly way in our election was being conducted and you are sir uh, highlighted that there are four ways to improve our electoral process and you said that these are the only way we can improve our democracy better and you said that i think in the context of flawed democracy these are the necessary things that need to be addressed and thank you for sharing sir and pushpa kumar ji thank you very much uh, for uh, your uh, time and uh, thank you for moderating the whole event and thank you everyone for attending the event thank you very much thank you very much it's a it's such a wonderful program today to think collectively about uh, the democracy and celebrating democracy on the occasion of the birth anniversary of uh, sri late uh, chaipan reddy sir i once again thank uh, all the the distinguished speakers the uh, the distinguished participants the family and friends uh, who have organized this and shared the views thanks a lot sir we'll always be grateful to you yes thank you very much sir bye we'll wind up now thanks a lot yeah. we'll be in touch yeah thanks